What's up and good morning guys. Ooh, try not to spill my coffee here on the bumpiness. I probably shouldn't be holding this directly above me. So my alarm did not go off this morning. Oh geez, uh, we have, well, hey, you know, good thing for the vinyl floor. Uh, and I am running late. That's not good. That's not like me when it comes to uh, work stuff like this. So uh, racing over to the job site right now. But today we've got a doozy. If you guys have ever seen any type of TV show or anything like that, you've noticed that, uh, you know, flipping houses was a big thing. You see the TV shows, you see these guys come in and in like two weeks for, oh geez, oh, we are making a huge mess right now. Oh, it's getting bigger. For $10,000, they completely renovated an entire house and it looks beautiful on TV. Well, the thing nobody shows you is the nightmare stories, the hack job. There are very few flippers out there that I have personally seen their work and been like, wow, you did a good job. And today, guys, we have a really bad one. Um, I'm on my way right now. Hopefully they let me film inside their house. It's not something I typically do because I don't like to invade people's privacy uh, and film projects inside their houses. But, but this one I feel like is a warning to a lot of people. So that's why I want to do it. Let's race to the job site and try to not spill any more coffee. Oh yeah, yep, it's gonna smell like coffee in here for a while. All right guys, so get ready for this nightmare. It's not gonna look as bad from outside as it is when you see inside, but check this out. So this, obviously we got a pool here, big hillside, and you guys know we've been getting a ton of rain. And this house has major water issues and that is because of a house flipper. Now you might not be able to see what's going on here, but let me explain. Now if you guys look here, there's a lot of elevation changes. You can see that the house is below grade, which means it is below the yard elevation, which is up here. Well, this area right here was basically added on by the flipper. Uh, and the reason being is obviously you more square footage, you're gonna get more money for your house. Now, legally, you can't really put that square footage in because none of that was permitted and that used to be a patio right there. However, some real estate agents will let you put it in and then sometimes it's like, it doesn't even matter. If somebody comes to look at a 1200 square foot house that's 1400 square feet or bigger, it's just, it's gonna feel bigger. They're not necessarily gonna sit there with a tape measure and measure out all of the rooms when they're buying the house. The house flipper decided he's gonna turn this patio into more living space inside the house. And did he did this so poorly, it is causing massive issues inside the house. You guys know, Southern California, we've been getting a ton of rain. And I mean a ton of rain. And all the issues are now starting to pop up because of that. If you look around the pool deck, you'll see we've got this like pink concrete here, and then it turns to gray. Well, this was all added. So basically what happened is uh, they built this little wall down here and you can see that obviously we've got concrete block walls here and then uh, you can see how that's a little bit wider than the house framing. That's because that is concrete block as well. They then, we believe, backfilled this. We're not sure how far until we start to dig into this. Backfilled this and created a big pool deck, right? And from here it looks great, right? You know, you got a nice big pool deck. You can gain some more square footage on your house. Awesome. Not awesome. So you'll notice in the center right here, there is a deco drain. And that's what this channel drain is right here. Uh, and the reason that's there is because the concrete slopes towards the house and then they try to slope it a little bit away from the house. Uh, obviously the last thing you want is a bunch of water flooding right up to the edge of your house. Especially considering we've got all of this roof line right here, which already is dripping because just of the moisture in the air today, you can see the roof line is dripping. So when it rains, you've got so much roof line dropping down here and it just number one overwhelmed the drain but number two the drains were installed improperly let's look at that next we've got these drains here and these come in 10 foot sections and we find the seam is somewhere in here right here oh so they taped over it the homeowner did because we identified this as a problem when we were here to come look at this job uh, they actually caulked it too but prior to that that center section there this drain is sloped this way and this way so that center section opened up which basically all the water just created a nice cavern to go straight down into the dirt. And then uh, a bunch of drains were installed for rain gutters, but rain gutters were never put in. So we've got a drain there for a rain gutter. And what's weird is this one actually ties into here. Uh, let's see if we can open this up. There we go. So this is comes from here and it like supposed to bubble up there and then carry all the way down to here. And then once it builds up enough, it would go into there, which goes out that away. Then over here, there's another drain and it's gonna be super hard to see until we tear this one out. But basically, it looks like they didn't have any 90 degree um, couplings left. So instead they used a T and then there's a T going back that way towards the house and they just put tape over top of it. 
to hopefully stop the water from going into the house. Well, as you can imagine from a setup like this, it hasn't been working and the inside of the house got completely flooded and destroyed. And what's crazy is that's not even the bad part. I mean, that's the bad part, but it gets tenfold worse once we get inside. We'll show you guys that, but for now, we're getting outside ready. Um, one of our solutions, well, step number one is going to be, we just gotta get the dirt away from this house. You don't want dirt up against your house. Unless you have a really good waterproofing job and you, you know, like in basements and stuff, but this does not, this, I don't even think this has anything, let alone the wall that's there is not structurally sound. It is not grouted. It's just open cell block and it's failing. And this entire wall is falling into the house. What we're gonna start doing here is we're gonna saw cut this concrete, break all the concrete out, dig all the dirt out, and basically create uh, a new wall that's gonna hold the dirt back, probably where it used to be before the flipper came in and turned this patio into a room. And once I get the guys going and start saw cutting, breaking out the concrete, I'm gonna run and grab the Mini X. Again, I woke up a little late today, didn't have time to grab it. Uh, then we gotta squeeze the Mini X back here. Uh, the Mini X that I got, the reason I got the size I got is because I do a lot of residential stuff in backyards like this. Uh, for the ranch, it's a little small, but then for yards like this, it's just a little big, but we're gonna have to tear down a little bit of this carport thing here. We're gonna knock off some of these block. Uh, we're probably just gonna take off the first layer and then we're gonna try to use these sandbags to get me down here without like totally destroying these blocks. Because, you know, they're not grouted. There's no concrete in them. We don't wanna chew these up uh, because you're not really gonna find pink old block like that to match. Um, and put it back. So we'll pull all these off that we can, and then we'll try to track down over here because there's going to be a lot of dirt coming out. I mean, again, we're going uh, almost five foot out from the wall of the house there and all the way down to basically that elevation. We want to get below the foundation. That way, no water can get up underneath it and inside the house. And check this out. I'll let any of you guys that have ever installed windows see if you spot an issue with the stucco work that was done around these windows. I'll just let you take a peek, take a peek for a second, take a peek. Some of you guys have probably already spotted it. Um, number one, the stucco work is just, uh, it's kind of interesting stucco work here. I mean, it's all over the map. Um, but number two, windows have weep holes in them. Usually about down here on the flange somewhere, there's a weep hole. That way, if any water gets into the window, it has a way out. Well, they stuccoed over top of all of the weep holes. So another way for water to get in, but knock it out. So where's it gonna go? It's gonna get inside the house eventually. Now you can see on these windows right here, these are the weep holes. So again, once water gets down there, you can see there's holes right there. Um, the water gets in, it has a way out. The stucco job was just very, very, very subpar. Now I kind of wish it had just rained because it would show you guys a little bit more of what we're dealing with here in terms of water. But basically this wall was just leaking water out because so much has gotten down into the dirt and saturated. Well, if it's leaking out this way, it's also leaking out that way into the house. And again, the house is flooded. It's completely torn apart right now because of all the water getting inside. But you'll also see, anytime you see cracks like this, that means movement. And typically it would mean like, you know, this little wing is kind of separating from the house. But I think what we got going on here is a little bit of both. Uh, this wall is actually moving in. So this side looks like it's like the only wall that the flipper didn't touch. The stucco's beautiful. Water line might have been added by the flipper. I don't know, kind of weird to run. A, I don't know why you wouldn't just put a spigot down there. You would run it all the way here with the copper just screwed to the outside of the house. But <laughs> this is the nicest looking wall in the house. The stucco work over here is just so, so subpar. Um, like it's embarrassing. If I was actually a stucco guy doing this, if it was just like a handyman, like, ugh, I don't even, like I wouldn't even do this to a customer. It looks so bad. I mean, look at this. Like the stucco work is just, it's horrific. Now you can also see right here, the homeowner has gone ahead and put some tape and then tried to seal this because when we, again, when we came and inspected, the drain had actually pulled away or they just never ran their concrete up to the edge of the drain. And there's a whole nother spot right there for water to get into. So it has just been a nightmare for these poor homeowners who got super excited, bought a house. You guys know, Southern California, houses are very, very expensive. You got a sweet house with a pool, nice backyard. And it has just been nightmare after nightmare after nightmare for them. We're gonna have to do this in stages because it is a lot of money to come in and fix this entire nightmare. And again, like they spent a bunch of money to buy this place. So first stage is get dirt away from the wall 
get all this backyard all set up and that'll buy them a little bit of time from you know not having water constantly enter the house even though granted we are going into summertime so that's a good thing and that'll help also buy them some time and then stage two is going to be just completely ripping off this side of the house because it's bad okay while the guys are getting that carport taken down i'm gonna start marking out to socket i'm gonna run and grab the mini x mini x isn't gonna do a ton for us on this job but hopefully it makes things a little bit easier getting that dirt out we're still gonna have to move it around with wheelbarrows and stuff get backed up here to grab the mini x Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay, Mini X is attached. Let's go back to the job. Made right to the site. We've got Papa Rhino pulling up in the beautiful 450. Going to have him help us out doing, uh, I believe we're doing port in place walls. We're going to see once we open up uh, the ground how we want to attack building this new wall section. Either it's going to be port in place concrete, which is basically we form it up as if we were doing like a driveway, but obviously, you know, four or five foot tall. And then we pour the concrete behind there and then uh, we get a solid concrete wall or are we gonna lay block and then we grout the block and basically build a concrete wall that way. We're not sure until we open it up, but you know, Papa Rhino is a mason slash concrete guy, so he's gonna come help me out on this. having a fresh battery in the mini x don't have to jump start it anymore so that's good let's get this thing tracked up into the yard i believe the guys already got that carport out of the way now quick fun fact for you guys if you see that wall up there not this wall the wall behind it papa rhino actually built that wall so while this house was getting flipped i don't know what, uh, how many years ago but papa rhino was building that wall back up there he was watching the hack work that was going on so it's crazy how it came full circle that i'm the one that got the call to come fix this house this hill is pretty steep so i opted to back up it so we don't risk flipping her over so what's funny is Papa Rano built that wall very nicely right you can see up there all the way for it nice wall it's got the right cap on it and then the homeowner uh went and cheaped out and had somebody else come build this lower one and uh she's still trying to use Papa Rano's account at supply now Papa Rano just <laughs> gave him some crap right now because the homeowner came out I was like oh hey Papa Rano's like hey <laughs> you using my account been around so we're facing the right way Tight squeeze, tight squeeze. Hopefully we don't tear up this concrete. This looks like it's just a little concrete overlay. I'm telling you, on the ranch, this is a small excavator. In a little backyard, there's a big excavator. Hopefully we can squeeze through right here. Tight squeeze, tight squeeze. Don't hit the block walls. The boys already removed those blocks. You gotta watch the pool equipment right there. Guys, I am pleasantly surprised to see that there is actually rebar in the concrete. I didn't think we were going to see rebar. Uh, and I'm only pleasantly surprised for like the homeowner's sake, not for our sake. It makes it a little tougher to break out, but it's not that bad. They didn't use a high PSI concrete, so it's breaking up pretty easy. how buried these windows are guys this is crazy luckily over here we're not sure we don't think this side's an issue we're working with a very tight budget to help these guys out so there's just not enough in the budget to tear out all the concrete that's stuck in the house it's just gonna have to get done in stages we believe the main issue with water entering is right here i'm not the first contractor to come out and look however when i came out and looked i started testing running water running water in the drain seeing things and the homeowner's like, wow, you're the first person that's actually done that. Everybody else is just kind of throwing a price out at us without ever like trying to figure out the issue, which is crazy to me, because how are you gonna fix something if you don't know what the issue is? And I'm not saying I'm the best, I'm not saying we're perfect, not saying we always get it right 100% of the time, but one thing I do is I make sure my customers are happy and I make sure my work is done right. Front of the house gives you guys a good look at <laughs> what I believe was existing stucco, right? Like nice skip trial, looks decent, looks pretty good. And then you get this, like what happened? What happened here? Tony, if that guy has stucco guy written on the side of his truck, he needs to just cease doing all work because this is horrible. You can see where like the windows were, like they didn't break the stucco back properly. It's almost like they attached them to the face of the stucco. That's why this stucco pops out right here. Anything that the flippers guys touch is horrendous. I mean, it's just so boogered up everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. 
tommy and how it's basically kind of chopped off that's because over the years parts of this has fallen and there's a little bit of vegetation up there but not a lot and you don't really have let's see we've got a wall here that there's supposed to be a little retaining wall in the corner let's take a peek behind here and just like i suspected there is no retaining wall back here all we have are these two by ooh, those are big. Those are big. two by 16 two by 14 whatever that is um that's holding this little bit of dirt back here and luckily they have this little flat spot so if it does give a little bit they got a, a little bit of a ways here before it spills out into the yard and the pool but basically the flipper came in slammed just a fence in real quick to kind of hide how scary that hillside is especially when you have a pool here so let's just imagine now you guys are seeing the water at my ranch that is still flowing and it hasn't rained in like two weeks because it's just so much ground saturation so you have all this water coming off this hillside that's then pushing underground it's pushing the pool towards the house and then this guy decides to you know butt all the dirt and concrete and everything up to the house now you got all this weight pushing up against the house and that's why the house wall is failing and basically all the block work that was done here is not grouting, right? So when we say grouting block work, we're talking about filling all of these cells with concrete. A block wall as it sits right here is not strong. The fact that it's still holding up this hillside is kind of impressive. And I'm gonna say that's mostly because of that vegetation right there and it's probably filled with dirt. But basically what block are is blocks are forms for concrete. But if you do block work like this, you build your walls. If you want it to be a retaining wall, you then come in and you fill this entire block wall with concrete and we'll have rebar every 16 inches every eight inches depending on you know what the wall engineering called out for and then we'll have horizontal rebar depending on what the engineering calls out for on the sides of the wall none of the walls here have that which is unfortunate because that's what's holding that side of the house up and that's what's holding the pool and the hillside and everything back from pushing into the house with no concrete in it and no rebar i'm waiting for the homeowner to get home so we can get inside and show you it is bad guys this part out here doesn't look as scary as how bad it looks inside. Oh yeah, look at that. It's full of water and it has not rained in a while. wet and moist it is still look at that look at all that water that's sitting right there like i can see a stucco patch right down the center right there i don't know what that would be for uh one thing that pisses me off though is work like this like whoever poured the concrete looks like they did a decent job but when you're mating up the old concrete like this do it like we did it where you saw cut a straight line what they do here is they basically just break the concrete out and whatever that line is that's what they pour the new up to which looks horrible what would it take for you to come in with a saw, an angle grinder, whatever you have, put a diamond blade on it, and just cut a nice straight line right there. That way the new concrete mates up to the old on a straight line, not super jagged like they did right here on this step. Like that just looks horrible. And then you're also trying to feather the concrete in, and then you end up with like this tiny little eighth inch overlay which just cracks to crap like that. Whereas if you had a nice straight edge, you'd have the full thickness of the concrete up to the edge. Well, it is a good thing they never put rain gutters in and hook these up because just as I suspected, this is in fact a T that they just try to tape up the backside. Plus they used perforated pipe that has holes in it. So even if this thing started filling with water from rain gutters, it would have just been spilling out underneath the concrete or in the concrete and eventually seeping down in. Plus they didn't glue or tape any of their joints. So yeah, this, this is bad. This is dumb. Uh, no, no, this... <laughs> now again, keep in mind, it has not rained here in weeks and I just took a scoop out. We're only just below the grade of the concrete and look at how wet and moist all of this dirt is. And of course, again, we found another drain that has no glue, no tape on any of the piping. So obviously all of that is just gonna leak if water even you know really gets down in there. This is the stuff that pisses me off, guys. The flipper had the audacity to build this wall completely illegally and horribly. And again, we're about to go inside here in a second. But not only that, didn't even make an attempt to waterproof this block. Doesn't even make an attempt. Now concrete is permeable, right? So water can go through concrete. So when we build foundations, we have to put plastic underneath them. Uh, that 
prevents the water from coming up through. So if you have wood floors or anything like that, we do our best to put a vapor barrier underneath. That way it doesn't come up from underneath, saturate your wood floors, cause them to buckle or bow or anything like that. So concrete doesn't make things waterproof. Just because you concreted over top of this and tried to seal this edge here, doesn't make it waterproof, especially when you put drains in all kinds of improperly. So you've got all of this water saturating up against these block and block is even less dense than concrete, right? Like let's look at the side of concrete that we saw cut right here. And then if you look at block, like block is much more porous. So it's just soaking water up and taking it straight into the house. So not only do they, like, they don't attempt to even waterproof it, they just try to hide all this crap. They try to hide this hack work. And then they ask top dollar for these houses when they do work like this. It drives me absolutely insane because their whole goal is to screw somebody over. That's it. Squeeze the most amount of money they can out of something while doing the crappiest work that they can. And most people wouldn't know. Most homeowners aren't educated enough about construction to even like see potential issues, let alone don't get me started on home inspectors because 99.9% .9 of them are pretty useless. Uh, it's just one of the processes you have to go through the five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars you have to spend when you go to buy a house, but they don't ever point out real issues. Hey guys, get ready. Here we go. I've teased it long enough. Here's inside the house. You guys can see uh, basically what they did is they tried to build a retaining wall out of block work, right? Which, uh, I mean, it's kind of the right way to do it. If you actually do it properly and execute it properly. So where we're standing used to be a patio. Uh, the house ended right here. They decided to add on and extend out an extra about eight to 10 feet there. Uh, this wall actually might've used to be here. Now that I'm seeing the stucco on it, this wall was probably what held that back. This was patio. And then they just furred it out with some two by fours on the side here. So they were able to screw drywall in. But look at inside all of these walls is just dirt because there is no concrete grouting these walls. There's no rebar in it, which that's what brings the strength to a wall like this. Then they just hogged out giant holes in it to run the electrical because they obviously didn't use the two by fours. Sideways, they just furred it out to give you as much room as they could. So now you're putting these big old holes in the block work, which is another way for water to come through, let alone there's just, again, absolutely no waterproofing on the outside. But check this out, meet Abel. Look at this, the wall. So I don't know if it's going to show up as good on camera as it does in person. Okay, get it in line. Okay. So all of this dirt is pushing this wall over, but then the framing at the top there is locked in. So that's why you're seeing in the center there, it's basically going from that to bowed out because it's kind of locked in at the bottom, but not really, but more so it's locked in on that roof line there. And the whole wall is just basically like that right now, which is obviously dangerous. So this is why I wanted to do this first. Let's alleviate all of the pressure up against the house, um, take the pressure off the wall and take the way to the water that's just sitting up against the wall and saturating in. Then phase two down the line, um, we'll be removing this entire wall and framing it traditionally like the walls you see behind me where it's uh, stud framing all the way to the ground. We'll have to get up underneath there depending on what the edge looks like of what used to be the patio. If there's a footing down there, we can go off of that. We're string lining it now. Hopefully you guys can see how far out yeah. that is. And that's with me at like this corner over here is also already pushed out, but yeah, that's a big old bow right there in the center. Look at that. That's crazy. Basically, again, what happened? All the rain, all the water got pushed up against the house. There was nowhere for it to go other than inside the house. And well, as you can see, the house is just pretty much all the flooring was destroyed. Um, so they're kind of in the middle right now of waiting for us to fix the outside issue before you want to put the inside back together. Uh, insurance is handling the inside, not the outside. And so they're in that whole battle that sucks. It really does suck. I feel really bad for these people because what I think happened is, and look at this, like every, they ain't, they ain't even dirt in most of this. This is just hollow block. This entire thing holding up all that dirt back, which I'm sure that pool is at some point pushing a little bit this way, which again, that's why you see the wall doing this. I have no clue what this framing is attached to because there's no grout inside of the concrete block to like actually properly anchor that four by four. The windows are weirdly two different sizes. Now they're the same size, but outside they look different sizes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. There's, there's a lot going on that's wrong inside of here. Uh, but check this out. So I think, that, so the people that currently own it, they bought it from the person that bought it from the flipper. And I think that they knew there was an issue because if you come over here, you can see on this wall, it looks like somebody went a little crazy with like some Henry's tar or like, some flex seal or something, which leads me to believe that the people that bought it from the flipper had a little bit of water issue here, tried to doctor it up and butcher it together, 
and then just sold it really quick and passed it on to let it be somebody else's problem because the rest of the wall doesn't even have like this half-assed attempt at waterproofing it and obviously waterproofing doesn't work on this side like you need to do it on the other side because you're not sealing all the way down you got to get below the frame you got to get below the foundation otherwise it's just going to come up from underneath the um, bottom of the block or the bottom plate of the framing so these poor homeowners have an absolute mess on their hands and again it's all because of some guy tried to cheap out try to fake a house's square footage with some really shoddy crappy work and these people are paying for it and it sucks he made his money he's long gone the next people saw the issue, doctored it up, hit it real quick. They're long gone. And now these people are stuck with fixing it properly because, well, we haven't had a few years of rain that was like substantial enough. But this year we had substantial enough rain for all of these issues to start showing. So that water traveled from where you saw in there to all the bedrooms. I don't want to go through all their stuff and like, you know, film too much of their house. Pretty much every bedroom was affected. The living room was affected. The kitchen was affected. And they've been living like this for a little while and it's, it sucks. Um, and now that I'm looking at this yard out here, I wonder if this was already here inside of there. And then basically they took what they would have done here built out to the current retaining wall, which again, are they really even retaining walls because they are all so hollow and there's no grout inside of there. And the reason I'm making this video is as a buyer beware. If you have even an inclination that the house was flipped, you better look super close at a bunch of stuff. Um, there's certain things though, like I said, it, it's just hard to see. Us looking at this from the outside, we'll probably see there's a potential for water issues. Most people, most home inspectors that just have to do like a, quick little class and course to get licensed, probably wouldn't see that there's a potential for a water issue here. So unfortunately, as a homeowner, you have to do your own due diligence. Uh, look into the property, look into why it was sold, who's selling it, what's going on, and hopefully you don't find yourself in a mess like this because this is very expensive to fix. So my plan is, by doing that, pushing the wall back, getting the dirt away, putting in the rain gutters everywhere, it would take a torrential flood for anything else to happen. At least that's, you know, that's what we hope. We're doing our best. They had one company come in and claim that they could try to waterproof it from the inside by drilling holes, putting a little gun through and pumping in expanding spray foam on the backside, um, which we all know, like that's not really how you waterproof anything. Uh, plus that was an extremely expensive option for even the company admitting that it was like maybe a temporary patch. All in all, this is what it's gonna take opening this up we could open this up try to waterproof that and put it back on but this wall is not structurally sound we're not even gonna act like we can use this wall for anything this is all coming out on this side over here the concrete ended up being like almost six inches thick we had uh sent paparano to go grab one of his gas concrete saws so we can cut all the way through this and we don't risk chipping the edge because we're just basically cutting it with a uh, seven inch diamond blade so while we wait for him to come back we've got enough opened up here i think we're gonna see if we can start digging with the mini x now again this mini x is way oversized for the yard but it's the one I own, so that's what we're using. Basically, we're gonna have to wheelbarrow everything out to the front to where we're gonna be staging the dirt. So I'm just gonna dig it out with the Mini X, scoop it into a wheelbarrow. It's a very slow process. Unfortunately, that's how we have to do a lot of things around here when we're working in small yards. Just hopefully there's nothing in here. That's my biggest hope. We believe all the pool equipment is running from basically the skimmer right there directly to the pumps. And it would be really weird for anything to be in here but you know, everything that we've seen in this place is very, very weird. So here's to hoping we don't find anything that we shouldn't. Now to make my life easier so I can keep digging, um, it's gonna be better if we can swing out over the pool, but obviously we don't wanna get a bunch of dirt on the cover or anything. So we're gonna uh, use this tarp to hopefully catch anything that falls out of my bucket. That way we don't dirty up their cover. This gives us something we can clean. Now, when you don't glue your, your pipes, then they, they just do that. It's kind of weird and then they switch to like, ABS. Oh, what's going on here? What do we got going on here? We got more concrete. That's kind of strange. They did tape this pipe. Let's see if we can yank this, this pipe up first because it's going to get in our way. We're going to go gingerly for a minute until we're somewhat certain we're safe to dig here. Pops like these are slow. Pickens. You're probably saying, Ryan, why don't you just get one of those really small walk behind bobcats or even the little uh, ride in ones? Because this honestly ends up being quicker. It's more maneuverable. You're not worried about hitting something. A couple guys with wheelbarrows on jobs like this is it's better. <laughs> it's three inch and. Uh, is this a plumbing? Yeah, it doesn't even fit. 
No wonder they use mucho tape. That's the only reason they use tape. What a hack job, guys. What would it take? Maybe $50 in the right fittings, maybe? a very slow process when we have to wheelbarrow stuff out. I know a lot of guys use like concrete buggies to do certain jobs like this, but again, maneuverability, trying to turn here, even on tracks or on wheels, you're gonna mar up the concrete like crazy. This is unfortunately the fastest way to do it. Wish we had a couple more guys here with us today, but we're a little short-handed, so that's what we got. Hefe's a beast, Abel's obviously a beast, we all know that, so we're gonna get it done, it's just slow. Right now, we're gonna measure, because we wanna make sure we are below the foundation or the finished floor inside. That way, let's just assume this is the finished floor inside. If we just dig right to here, water's still gonna be able to get in underneath the block. We wanna be dug down a little bit, right? Hopefully there's some type of footing or concrete underneath that block work to where our new dirt level is gonna be down here. Plus we're gonna put in some gravel. That way water can never just seep its way into the house. It's all gonna come down and there'll be a bunch of drains down in here. So you guys can see right there where Abel is working, we believe. Well, I mean, we believe that is the bottom of something. Now, is that a footing or is that just the old patio that they just set block on top of? If I were betting, I would say that's patio. So it should be four inches thick of concrete. Abel's gonna get around it, clean it out and give us a better idea of what we're working with, but that'll let us know what height we want to be at. So, because it is a uh, unbelievably slow process, uh, this is about as far as we got today. You also see that I started digging the footing down there because again, we're gonna have a wall here, so we need a footing. We did dig out underneath this side to see that there is a little bit of a footing underneath the uh, concrete that's there to hold up this wall, even though there's no rebar into it. So it's really not tying anything in. It's just holding the weight of the wall. But once we're like moved back from a section, we can't come back. That's why I'm leaving this concrete not fully broken out. That way I can track to the edge and I'm not chipping up this edge and making it look like crap. And then once I go back a little further, we'll take that out and then start taking the dirt out. So basically working our way back. It's not like it would be impossible for us to come back up here. But if we did, we would risk completely destroying this edge. Plus I would have to be up on the pool coping right here, which is this brick. And I don't want to risk damaging that or that cracking or falling or anything like that. So we're going to dig the footing as we're coming back as well. There'll be a little bit of hand cleanup in there. We'll make a progress. So we'll jump back on in the morning. And here's to the start of day two and it is a crappy day. Look at this. I have upgraded my coffee cup situation. Look at this. Got a little disposable foam cup. Everybody's probably freaking out because I don't have a tumbler. I don't like tumblers. I don't like any reusable, like beverage container. As you guys can tell by my plethora of water bottles that are in all my vehicles, like shaker cups, I always forget about them. I leave them in the truck. They get disgusting and I throw them away because I don't want to use them again. Okay, we got us another wheel barrel for today. Well, with this overcast sky, it has been very wet. Look at all the water that is on the pool cover, all the water that is on our tarps that we had here. Shoot, the whole backyard is soaking wet. The roof is all dripping. And again, I don't even think it rained. I think that's just from it being so overcast. Look at all this water dripping off right there. Today's gonna be pretty much the same as yesterday. We're gonna dig. Abel's getting the laser set up. That way we uh, can set our elevation for our footing down there, as well as we'll pull the elevation off of there to there. Um, and then we'll make sure that our footing is level all the way out. Hey. What's that? What's that? Or quieren marcar este 14 or quieren the gray for us they use the metro. So what we're doing is we set on top of what looks to be finished for the foundation or the that the patio or whatever of the patio or which is actually the finished floor inside. And then from there we work backwards, right? So if we want to go down, we need to bring the eye of the laser up. So we're gonna go six inches and that's gonna be the bottom of our floor in here because then we can bring up four to six inches of gravel 
and then 14 inches is going to be to the bottom of our footing there. So as I'm digging, Abel is going to be going along with that stick right there with the laser on it, and we're going to make sure our elevations are all nice and level. So basically what that device over there does, it just shoots out a level laser line. It's got an automatic leveler in there. When you turn it on, it sits there and finds level, shoots out a line, and then the eye that Abel is screwing on right there is just basically the receiver, the other end of that, which um, will tell us to go up or down because it's got a receiver area of about two inches or so. And as long as that laser is within those two inches, it'll give you an up or down um, determination to let you know where you need to be to be perfectly level. Yes. All righty, let's get our first scoop of the day. It's a good scoop right here. gonna suck today. Being so wet, dirt's gonna be heavier. It's starting to get slippery right here, this dirt, like, this dirt is almost like a crappy clay that gets really, really sticky. So give you guys a good perspective of what I see, hopefully from that angle. You probably actually have a better angle than I do. You gotta go right alongside, try to dig this out. without messing anything up. Can't see much. Now, a lot of people don't realize how long stuff like this takes. I mean, even bringing in equipment, it's such a slow process. Why? Kind of weird. It's why it's expensive. Maybe if I had an Encon attachment on here or a tilt rotator attachment, but those Encons are like $30,000, which is not that much less than what I paid for the machine. Well, this is fun. It is now currently raining. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but gotta make a makeshift little house there so the laser doesn't get all wet. We're definitely making more progress uh, today now that obviously we're all opened up and didn't have to break out the concrete, um, other than we are breaking it out as we go. We've got Papa Rhino's electric Husqvarna Ugh, concrete saw. The, uh, he's got a couple of gas power ones, but the fuel was sitting in them. They've all been rebuilt recently, and then they left some fuel sitting in them. So they were a little bit of a pain to start yesterday. Uh, so instead of just sitting there monkey with them all day, busted out the brand new Husqvarna. So again, we're kind of just breaking out this last section as we go back. That way we don't chip up this edge and make it look like crap.
slow of a process this is. We are making fantastic progress though. Break out some more concrete. Abel just went through and saw cut this nice and deep. Let's see if we can break it up into small pieces. Yeah, we'll call that small enough. Gotta give a big shout out to Hefe today, man. Hefe has been on this wheelbarrow all day. Oh, 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 no complaints. Just keeps rocking it out, rolling the dirt. Hefe is my dump truck today, or my skid steer, I should say, because, you know, he's making the trips back and forth. That man is a rock star right there. What's funny is, I was given like one scoop per wheelbarrow, and like Hefe was getting mad at me that I wasn't loading him up enough. So he wanted two scoops, which two scoops is honestly way too much. So I've just been giving him like one healthy scoop. This is not a healthy scoop, but I knew that wheelbarrow was half full. Uh, but I've been giving him one healthy scoop, so he like thinks he's getting two, but I'm also not killing the poor guy. And listen, the guy sitting in the machine would be nothing without the grounds crew. That is for sure. Abel's down there making my footings and the edges of the wall and everything look nice, perfectly plumb and beautiful. Something I didn't even notice earlier, guys, but look at where these two windows just butt together. Um, no window expert, but I don't believe that type of window is meant to do that, where they just butt together with like no framing in between. Like that's a little, it's a little wild there. I'm sure. If you look down the wall here, you'll actually see that it's like kind of buckling in a little bit. Um, so we're staying far away from that with the machine. Uh, Abel comes in on those edges right here and just cleans it up using the roto hammer there. That we're not putting any pressure on this wall because my biggest fear is the machine pushing on that wall and then the whole thing goes. These boys have been moving a ton of dirt. I think we calked it out to roughly 20 yards, plus it kind of fluffs up once you dig it up out of the ground, but decent amount of concrete, a ton of dirt. Uh, we gotta figure out what to do with the dirt. In the morning, I'm gonna bring the dump trailer. We're gonna get the concrete all out of here so we don't mix it. We're gonna try to kind of grade out the front yard a little bit, eat up some dirt uh, to save on some hauling costs for the owner. Because again, we're working on a pretty tight budget to get this done for them, but, but doing what we can to help out show you guys the progress we made today uh got a lot further than i thought we would get which is good it's slow it's not fun but but it's necessary so we've only got you know well we got to get the footing from there to here but just this little bit more to get down to grade get our footing all finished up but everything else is looking good you can see just how much water I'll take you guys down here for a second ooh, ooh, ooh. all right you can see i mean the water was all the way down I mean, it's even below the grade there there's just so much saturation and you can see the two different types of dirt this is like yellow fill this is probably what they did when they built the house and or did the pool and then probably built this wall and had a little bit of backfill with some of this crappier dirt here that just holds the moisture in good news is looking at this side there's no water coming from this side so it's not like the pool is leaking or anything like that um, I think we're really gonna alleviate a big issue by doing what we're doing here and then in talking with the homeowner, kind of gave them a couple of options, you know, if they want, we can actually build a deck. Once this wall gets torn down and repaired, uh, build a deck that way they can keep their patio with and leave everything down here open. We'll have our drains, we'll have our gravel and everything down below, but you'll still get your full patio with. Or if they just want to leave this open and when they tear this wall down, put little patio doors, have a little patio out here, and then they've got to put some railing up here or something like that. A lot of little options. Uh, and that's all gonna happen way down the road. This is just some kind of an emergency fix to get the main issue taken care of, and that is all of the water leaching into the house. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, you guys enjoyed this type of content. Um, if you're new to the channel uh, and you stumbled across this video, hopefully this helps you out if you're ever looking for it. So I will be uh, keeping tabs on this project for you guys. This is just the first video. I'll probably do another couple of videos on it until we get this whole area completed. But with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh.